what is going on YouTube what is going on Kansas City and what is going on everybody and welcome to the beat of KC ladies and gentlemen college football has kicked off it is underway football is officially you know this is absolutely amazing it's officially on TV we're seeing the excitement we're seeing people tune in we're seeing it all over Twitter all over social media the hype around football is back and what is absolutely incredible is we're going to see really kind of a shakeup. You know, we've talked about multiple times on this channel the what ifs. Are teams going to be added to the Big 12? Are teams not going to be added to the Big 12? Are they going to remain eight teams? Well, I think we found out. And I think what is absolutely exciting about this is the fact that Bowlesby actually was aggressive. It'd be interesting to see if really the, the teams from the Big 12 really kind of forced his hand. Or if he honestly felt like his job was at stake potentially if he wasn't aggressive going out and adding schools. And that's exactly what we're actually seeing. So from USA Today, as you guys are going to see pop up right here, it says the Big 12 Conference selects four new schools to join league. We talked about this. We've talked about each one of these schools, which is absolutely amazing. We're going to not only talk about the school itself, but what they provide. So first up, the schools are BYU, Houston, Central Florida, and Cincinnati. It says the Big 12 Conference has settled on four schools. It will add to the league, and the process is moving fast towards becoming official. A person briefed on the league's conversations told USA Today Sports. The person spoke on the condition of the anomaly due to the sensitive nature of the league's deliberations. The four schools are Brigham Young, which is BYU, Central Florida, Cincinnati, and Houston. Represent the most appealing options among teams currently playing in the group of five conferences. With the Big 12 attempting to quickly rebuild amid widespread uncertainty, uncertainty after losing Texas and Oklahoma to the SEC, we understand that is what fired this whole thing up, ladies and gentlemen. We understand that, and that's really kind of what caused this big shakeup. It, I mean, it came out of kind of nowhere. Uh, we know now that there was this has been in talks for a long time, but it kind of just came out of nowhere from a fan perspective. It says that basically BYU is a historic power and that currently plays as a football uh, football bowl subdivision independent, which I think is significant. We're going to dive in and talk a little bit about this, but that's why BYU could be added very quickly is because from a football perspective, they are classified as an independent. They're not attached to a conference. Yes, on some of the other sports like basketball and a lot of the other ones, they are tied to one. But from a football perspective, they could be added pretty quickly if they wanted to. It says last year's team won 11 games and completed four spot in the New Year's Six Bowl slate of games connected with the college football playoff. We also have to understand that Wilson was drafted to the Jets uh, as a quarterback. And, you know, he is absolutely doing some pretty good stuff right now for the New York Jets. So, you know, they've been able to get some pretty good players roll through there at BYU. It says the remaining three schools are the dominant figures in the American Athletic Conference. We've talked about that. It says Cincinnati reached the New York's, or excuse me, the New Year's six in 2020 as a top ranked team from the group of five. UCF and Houston have also reached New Year's six bowls since the advent of the playoff format. While BYU has national appeal, the three additions from the American would push the Big 12 into large markets in Ohio and Florida and give the league a foothold back into the Houston market. I think that's what's significant, is you're starting to really kind of spread out. You're really starting to uh, attract groups or schools that are in different regions, and I think that's what's big here. You know, the SEC obviously is starting to kind of expand out from that southern portion. They're really kind of starting to, to grow. But I think with what the Big 12 has been able to accomplish is they're really going to be in every time zone if you look at it. And, and I think that's what's significant. It says adding these schools will raise the Big 12 membership to a dozen schools, the highest total for the league since Colorado and Nebraska left for the Pac-12 and Big 10 respectively in 2011. What's crazy about that whole entire thing is it does not seem like it was that long ago. And again, they talk about really what happened in late July the Sooners and Longhorns shocked the college football world by announcing their intent to leave the Big 12 and join the SEC. Since then, both schools have said they will honor the Big 12's existing 
grant of media rights deals, which expires in 2025 be before becoming members of the SEC. So really five years. Uh, if they were to break ties or sever ties with that, that would cost a lot of money. I could still see it happening, um, maybe here in the near future, but for right now, they're, they're holding Pat and they're saying they're going to do that, which if BYU's added, it's going to be kind of interesting to see a new school come in and, and play the, the, you know, the likes of Oklahoma and obviously Texas. It says those departures left the Big 12 with eight committed schools, Baylor, Iowa State, Kansas, K-State, Oklahoma State, TCU, Texas Tech, and West Virginia, which we are aware of. And now we're adding four more. I think this is super exciting. I really do. It's nice to get kind of a refresher. I'm going to see some teams you don't usually get to see and vice versa. You know, teams like Minnesota are going to be at more of a competitive level in a conference on a day-to-day, you know, a, a regular season basis. Uh, BYU is going to be committed and things like that. So we're going to jump in. We're going to talk a little bit more. Um, and, and I think this is significant too, because it talked about how the big 12 has been scrambling and, and really since the announcement of Texas and Oklahoma. And I think that that's kind of, yes, they have been, but I'm sure a lot of schools kind of really saw what was best for them. And as the groups kind of came together and negotiated and talked, they're probably like, Hey, what's best for us is to stick together and see what we can accomplish. So that's, uh, what they're going to go ahead and do. It says that forced the Big 12 to think of alternative plans or risk dissolving altogether. Now, USA Today Sports confirmed the Big 12 has settled on Cincinnati, Houston, Central Florida, of the American Athletic Conference, and BYU. It says the AAC schools must give the league 27 months notice and pay $10 million in fees to leave. Definitely think that will happen. Uh, but like we said, too, BYU is not attached to the AAC or uh, the Mountain West when it comes to a conference in football, so it'll be a little bit easier for them. It says the four teams may uh, be able to join the Big 12 in two years, making it a 14-team conference if Oklahoma and Texas stay until their grant of rights agreement expires, which would be very interesting. You know, 14 teams, I've heard the rumor of the Big 12 actually becoming 16 teams at some point, so maybe this would be a good test to really see at 14. It says here is what each of the four teams brings to the table in a new look Big 12 conference, which would like to maintain its status as a power five uh, league with full autonomy. So it says Houston, Houston's expansive recruiting pipeline is an attractive sell in the nation's fourth largest city with the Cougars competitive football team and the and rising basketball program because they did go to the final four last year. Um, and I think that's significant, which they talk about. It says Houston adds instant value as credibility to the league that will sorely need it once the top dogs go to the SEC. Cincinnati, and Cincinnati obviously is ranked currently in the top 25 at number eight. Um, and so really kind of coming on scene as football too. So it's just primarily known for a basketball school with a rich tradition. Cincinnati's football program has made strides and currently is ranked and the top 10 in the USA Today Sports AFCA coaches poll. The Bearcats could also crash the college football playoff if they go undefeated, which would be incredible. As the school is used to playing musical chairs. They've been in multiple conferences, as you're about to find out. It says they've been in the Conference USA. They've been in the Big East. They've been in the Mid-American Conference. And now it sounds like they're going to be headed to the Big 12. It says the media market for Cincinnati is ranked number 36 which is bigger than markets near Iowa State, Baylor, and Texas Tech, current teams in the Big 12. So you can see relatively where they're at with that, and that's a huge part of why they're going out and probably getting these schools. BYU is currently operating as an independent, which we talked about, uh, football, so it doesn't have too much to do in terms of settling or paying fees to join a league. But that not uh, may not be the case in the other sports, which they are a member of the West Coast Conference. It says BYU Athletics doesn't play on Sundays, but that can be easily fixed, obviously, because of the religion that is there. It says they uh, do have an issue because they have games scheduled through 2035 and almost a full slate of games contracted from now until 2024. If nothing else, BYU also brings a broad and passionate fan base and has shown the ability to adapt to ever-changing landscapes in college athletics. I think that's significant too. I mean, we're we're seeing a very competitive football program um, coming to the Big Twelve. It'll be it'll be interesting to see how they slate in Central Florida. I mean, holy smokes! 
uh, really kind of turned it on. Uh, came back yesterday and actually uh, beat Boise State. Was incredible. Central Florida has the nation's largest undergraduate un- enrollment. With that many students on campus and a rich recruiting land in the Sunshine State, it is possible they could be competing for league titles in football as soon as Oklahoma and Texas ec- exit stage left. This is a football program with new coach Gus uh, is already making noise this season after the victory of Boise State, which we talked about. It says the Orlando television market is intriguing as well because it's nation's largest without the value of having a national football league team. So that makes sense right there. And that's something that you'll notice too, is like once you see areas that don't have an NFL team, they kind of gravitate a lot more to their college team. And that's why this is such a big deal too. If administrators were concerned about the educational value of these schools, UCF's academics and massive budget satisfies, satify, excuse me, satisfies, <laughs> excuse me, the Big 12 needs. So really kind of wrapping it all up right there. Super exciting time for the Big 12. Really exciting for those four schools. Obviously, this is going to be a huge deal once this is completed. Um, And it's just going to be nice to have 12 teams back in the Big 12 just to not only match the name, but just to see that, you know, going on. So I'm going to wrap it up right there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'm excited to see what you guys have to say in the comment section. Uh, because it, it does sound like Bullsby stepped up, moved pretty quickly. I think he was actually in Houston on Friday or even Saturday down there, um, you know, with talks of, of going to Houston and things like that. So very interesting to see him actually step up and be aggressive. And, and that's what I talked about in a couple of videos. So it's exciting to see that. Would love to see what you guys have to say in the comment section. Um, and, and really would love to get the negotiations and the talks and everything going on because I know we get that going in the comment section. So I appreciate you guys checking out the beat of KC. And as always, have a good day.